Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need your very own website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner. Hmm. I'm starting this off quite rude, aren't I? Eating. Talking with my mouth full. Now, any of my eagle-eyed viewers will no doubt notice that I'm no longer in Snowdonia. I'm in the Lake District. I mentioned that because in last week's video, I said that I'll see you at sunrise in Snowdonia. So what's going on? Why am I back in the Lake District? Basically, um, the hike that I did, I'll pop it up in the corner if you want to watch that particular video, but I was absolutely shattered, to put it simply. Got back to the van, I was knackered, couldn't sleep that night. Um, it was one of them where I was so tired I couldn't sleep. Sounds mad, but yeah. And I just decided, you know what, I'm going home. So that's what I did. <laughs> and it's a few days later now. And here I am in the Lake District. I've just had a workshop this morning, a one-to-one -one or a, a one-two-two, I suppose, with two wonderful gentlemen. Big thanks to Andy and Chris. And whilst I'm in this area, I thought, you know what, I'll go out for a little bit of a shoot. And what I'm after today is, um, in fact, I'll put up a little bit of a clip from last week's video. About half an hour till the sunset, I also feel I'm at risk of sounding like I'm getting a bit sunset obsessed on this particular adventure. There's probably shots all around me, like, and I don't know why I'm tunnel visioned on the sunset. It's no good. Don't be like that. <laughs> and yeah, I think I do go through a cycle as a landscape photographer where I obsess over sunsets and sunrises and, and nice light and night, nice conditions, which look, of course I do. I'm a landscape photographer, that's what we should do. But I do think sometimes it can get a little bit too much, you know, as important as light is, as important as nice conditions are, it's not everything, you know. There is the old enjoyment of being out with the camera as well, regardless of the conditions. So I, I feel like I need every now and again, a day like I'm gonna to have today where, look at it, it's one o'clock in the afternoon, it's rotten conditions for landscape photography, but I don't care. I'll, I'll put my sandwich down and show you this. Uh, I've picked out a location from this book, which you saw me using in Wales, if you watch the videos, um, obviously the, the North Wales version, but I don't really use this Lake District one, purely just because I know the lake so well, so I don't really find myself needing to use it that often, but I found um, a wonderful, oh, I've just dropped it. Sorry, Mr. Stuart Holmes, goodness me. Um, I found a nice location in it called Brock Barrow, which is this nice little hilltop viewpoint looking over Coniston Water, and then we've got the Coniston Fells in the background. Absolutely wonderful. So let's crack on, see what the day brings. Oh, it's quite warm today. Oh, I'll tell you what. Yeah, anyway, regarding what I was talking about, a second ago, I was just wondering if anyone else gets like any other landscape photographers. Do you get that? Where you like need to sort of check yourself almost. Like, what am I doing? It's not all, always all about the light. It's not always all about sunsets, etc. It's about being out with this thing and enjoying nature. Look at this, this is beautiful. Or is it just me? Maybe it's like a bit more of a, what do you call it? Like a headspace thing and some people don't even think about it. Whereas other people like struggle with it a little bit. What's that? A little rodent. But yeah, I feel proper chilled out today, like no pressure. Wow, beautiful countryside. Let's hope we can get the camera out this week. <laughs> I tell you what, I really like the look of this one on the back of the camera. Do you know what I think? I think the Nikon Z, this is the Nikon Z7 Mark One. I, I don't have a clue what the the actual specifications are, but um, I think the LCD screen or you know the live view on this particular camera is unreal. 
like everything just looks class on it. So I frame, a, taking a photograph of a wheelie bin on the back of it, and I look at it, I'm like, well, that's going to be, that's going straight in this in next year's calendar. Get a look at that wheelie bin. I mean, everything just looks quality on it, you know. But the point is, I'm really liking the way this one looks as well. Um, now there's one fairly big problem with this shot I'll get into in a second. Um, so I'm zoomed in right in at 200 mil. So I'm really making the use of the telephoto end of the 24 to 200 lens here. Um, and I just spotted this, this tree surrounded by a few little rocks, some crags on um, the brow of this hill, the top of this hill, it looks wonderful. And then right off in the background, we've got a much larger fell who's um, also very, very craggy. You know, it fits nicely. And I'll tell you what, I said before when I was in the van, the conditions today are rotten, I think the word I used was. Very harsh, the light's not great, just because we're in the middle of the day. But I am very lucky with the sky. We've got some nice clouds, some nice texture in the sky as well. Um, and we've also got a very, very subtle haze going on in the atmosphere. I think sometimes when it's too hazy, it can be, to, uh, it can be a real detriment to your photographs. But this is nice and subtle, especially when we're shooting a scene like this with so much depth. Um, it means we actually get a tiny bit of separation. But no, I, I love the way it looks. F11. ISO 64 and 160 of a second, nice simple settings, you know, especially this time of the day when we've got um, a lot of balanced light, you know. Focus on the tree and the crags. Now to the problem. We've got, um, well, there's like telegraph poles going across here and there's two wires just going straight across my scene. Um, and mm, a part of me was even thinking, should I just leave it in? But I'm going to clone it out. I'm actually going to clone it out, which isn't something that I'd usually do in Photoshop. Not because I've got a problem with it. I think it's a brilliant tool and it's there to be used, especially in times like this. Get rid of the man-made stuff. <laughs> Mind you, you could probably argue that the whole of the Lake District is man-made, could you? This would have been all forest at one stage, wouldn't it? I don't know. So it's, it's a different topic for a different day. Um, but yeah, I'll get rid of them in, in Photoshop. Hopefully I can do a decent job of it. Um, and yeah, I'm happy with that. That's a nice first shot and it fits perfectly well with everything that I'm trying to talk about today. Just relaxing, enjoying the landscape and taking photographs throughout the day and not being reliant on one moment of time at the end or at the beginning of my adventures, sunset and sunrise. <laughs> So I'm just stopping here to take a very quick photograph. We've got this beautiful little beck here with loads of really small little cascades. I mean, like there's nothing to them at all. Uh, but with this particular shot, I'm zooming in at 100 mil. Now, I don't think I'd have taken this shot or I'd have stopped to even look at this if it wasn't for my one-to-one -one workshop that I had this morning. And one of the, the gentlemen, um, Andy, he showed me a, an, an older photograph of, of his and it was a really simple photograph. Um, I hope he'll forgive me saying, you know, I mean that as a compliment. And it was just a nice image with a little bit of a longer lens zoomed in on a little cascade. It's just exactly like I'm doing here. You can see I've just got that tiny one down there. In fact, I, I shall email Andy and if he'll let me, I shall put his image up on the screen here. So hopefully he lets me or else you're just looking at a bunch of grass behind me. <laughs> um, but yeah, like really, really simple. Um, the sh shutter speed is quite important because what we're trying to do is capture the movement of the water. Um, I actually think a little beck like this with a few cascades would be a great place to come if you just want to practice your long exposures, you know. As I always say, I do think shutter speed is really important with these sorts of photographs. Um, I think Andy's photograph, I'll pop it up again if, if you'll let me. Um, I think he said he shot that at uh, an eighth of a second. So that'll give you an idea. My image here, I am taking at, well, I've, I've taken a couple actually. I think my favorite one is at one fifth of a second. ISO 
and then F11 and I've got my Nissi polarizing filter on the front and it's actually not doing that much polarization but it's acting probably as like a half a stop or a one stop ND filter and you know it's allowing me to get the um, one fifth of a second that I think is so important with this particular shot but yeah really really simple cheers Andy <laughs> By the way, just quickly, before I move on, before I forget, um, I think this, if this is of interest to just one person, I think it will be really valuable, so I have to share this. Um, I've recently just had, let me try and show you this, like, see there where it says like Nissi Brass. This is like Nissi's step up or step down rings. So I only need one of these so that I can have my large filter on my smaller lens. My, la my filter size fits my wide angle lens, my 14 to 30. If I want it on my smaller lens, see this ring steps it down. Now, here's my point. I've always had cheap step down rings or step up rings. I never know which one's which. Um, I guess this is a step down ring. I've always had cheap ones. I've had this one off Nissi, and I think it's about 20 quid. And look, it's a piece of metal at the end of the day, like I know. But I always found the cheap ones used to get stuck all the time. This, I mean, look at it. It's got this like, like, I don't know, sort of, serrated is that the right word serrated edge to it and it just means and, and the polarizer has as well and it just means so far anyway touch wood I need a tree because I hate it when this happens I got I've touched a tree um, so far they've never got stuck and they don't feel like they're going to either and I think it's just because I've got a much better quality step down ring thought I'd share that anyway um, this is going good nice and relaxed we're taking photographs that aren't best shots in the world but we're enjoying it Let's crack on. Oh, so, oh gosh. Oh. oh, I nearly went then. Camera and all. Oh. The sheep looking at me laughing. You know, he's laughing at me. Where is he? All I wanted to do was stop to say another thanks to today's video sponsor. I nearly killed myself. Um, a big thank you to Squarespace for kindly sponsoring today's video I really appreciate their support if you don't know who Squarespace are um, look if you'd like your own website Squarespace is the way to go if you ever thought I'd like to do my own website um, I use Squarespace I've used them myself for over three years now way before they sponsored me so they are my recommendation absolutely class wouldn't do it with anyone else um, and yeah, highly, highly recommended. It's really, really easy. Basically, you go on Squarespace's website, put your details in or whatever, and they've got loads of templates to get you started. And you can customize those templates further down the line. You could change it every day if you wanted to, um, to really make the website your own. But honestly, it's the ease of use that is its biggest USP, its biggest um, sell for me, absolutely well easy um, it's also a great place to sell things i use the e-commerce package for my squarespace website because i sell my prints my ebooks one-to-ones calendars all sorts on there and you wonderful people um, support me with all them purchases thank you so much but i wouldn't be able to do it without my squarespace website because i'd have nowhere to put them <laughs> um, and that that side of it's brilliant as well and uh, the customer service from them is brilliant. You know, I know we're not all whizzes with computers. We may struggle. We might hit a few speed bumps along the way. Um, but they've always been brilliant with me. Fantastic customer service. If you'd like to give them a go and maybe try and build your own website on Squarespace, go to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner um, and get yourself a free trial. And if you like your free trial, which I'm sure that you will, be sure to use the offer code Henry Turner at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. Right, let's see if we can get to the top of this hill without falling over. Oh, I'll tell you what. What? A vista for such a tiny little hill no complaints I absolutely love the Coniston range as well and 
it's such a privilege to see them from this perspective. You know, I think they look wonderful. It's the whole stretch of them, really, and it's gorgeous. And to be honest, that's exactly how I'm photographing it. I'm keeping it as simple as it gets, really. I'm just doing a pano, starting on the right-hand side, as far over there as you can see, really. Probably start at, like, Weatherlam, and then we, we come all the way across, past Coniston Old Man, Doe Crag, and then eventually we hit the beacon, which is just this lump on the other side of Coniston Water. I have tried as well, I don't know if this is going to work, but I've tried to keep the panel going to the left until we get right at the end of Coniston Water, the, the real southern end of Coniston Water down here where we've got some yachts. Um, and I, I don't know if it's going to be way too long and look silly, but I'm going to try it. And I'll just, I'll stop the panel whenever I feel, you know, whenever I feel it needs to stop when I've got it into Lightroom. But yeah, that is as simple as it gets. I was considering, can you see it there? It's just next to us. There, there. I was considering getting the trig point in as well because I quite like it, but nah, just gonna stick to the panel, nice and simple. So it's however many shots from right to left that it's gonna be. F14, ISO 64, and 1 60th of a second. All I need to say about that is I chose F14 because I've got some of um, this area down here in the foreground and this compared to the Coniston Fells in the background, huge amount of depth. So I'd, I want to make sure that, you know, there's a decent focus throughout the image. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. What a spot. I'll tell you what, it's all about the route up. This is secondary. The destination is secondary. The sunset is secondary. The sunrise, <laughs> I mean, it's not really, is it? That's an absolute lie and a half, but you know what I mean? Just because you're going out for a sunset doesn't mean you can't spend four hours before that on a wonderful hike enjoying everything else on the way there, you know. I don't know. I don't know. Hope you like this last panel. Thank you so much for your support and for tuning in. Please hit the thumbs up button. As I always say, it proper does help me out on YouTube. It actually does. <laughs> so I'd really appreciate that. And be sure to subscribe if you're new here. Hope you like this panel and I shall see you on the next adventure. Out!